The year 2020 brought lots of challenges. During March and April in Bosnia and Herzegovina, we were in an almost complete quarantine, shut down. At the time, people were panicking. They would run to the stores and buy only the most necessary items, such as flour, oil, canned food, etc. Toilet paper was among those items. As soon as the stores ran out of it, it was kind of ironic, but also made us all more scared. Lots of what-ifs came to our minds. At the time, I was living alone in a small apartment and I felt trapped, locked, so I decided that the best way to feel better was to document my reality in an even more ironic and distorted way. This photo was taken then. Luckily, very soon our quarantine experience wasn't so bad anymore and we could find the items we needed in the stores. I moved out to live with my boyfriend and this dark place of mine became just one documented memory. Don't be a jerk and hoard tons of food and toilet paper. Help the elderly, lend food, lend money. If you know someone who has mental health issues or is just struggling with anxiety, be there for them. Just talk and give support. If you are that person, ask for help. Share how you feel, no matter what anyone thinks. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Tajana Dedic Starovic and I am a professional freelance photographer and videographer uh, living and working in Banja Luka. It's a town uh, based in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. The photo actually was made during the COVID quarantine. And I was in a really, really bad place mentally at that time because I was living alone. I was going through a lot of anxiety, fear, uncertainty. I wasn't sure what is going to happen with my life. We were all in, in that mindset. But me as a freelancer, as a, someone who didn't have um, regular payments... It was really challenging because even the people who had um, like real jobs, like they were working in a companies, they also got fired and it was a real, real mess, especially in my country, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So I was really scared. So in um, like trying to figure out how to balance myself, how to feel better, I decided to create a project that will somehow um, explain to me and to my viewers better what I'm going through. And also uh, I try to do it in a more ironic uh, way because I wanted to put a bit uh, humor in all of that uh, work just to feel more lightheaded, to feel better. So this photo was part of that bigger series and it was just um, my somehow um, kind of uh, reflection about things that were happening because in a photo we see a toilet paper and on it it's written this is gold and the, f the toilet paper is actually taken on a, on a um, kitchen foil, the foil that we use for food and whatever. Uh, and the thing is that actually at the time, at the markets, at the shops, stores, there was like a shortage of toilet paper. And that was like the most ridiculous things that, the most ridiculous thing, and that was like the most ridiculous thing that could happen because uh, people were buying canned foods, uh, flour, and everything, you know, that you can store, that you can um, have in case of an emergency. But toilet paper, like, you know, why do we need so much toilet paper? And it was like a reflection of the complete panic, irony, uh, sadness that people were going through. The complete illusion of what is actually going on and what are our reactions. So that is actually the main thing that uh, inspired me to take this photo. 
Well, I was still in my uh, primary school at the end of it, and then later through high school, I had this uh, urge and a big need to express myself, and somehow the words and um, other things that were like known to me, they just weren't enough. So I tried experimenting with different uh, artistic mediums and then I figured out that photography is the one of the the best ways that I can actually express myself, express my thoughts, express uh, unique experiences that I was going through. So that was like, you know, the the starting point. And then later through my growing up and uh, when I had to decide like what I'm going to actually do with my life, I um, first started studying psychology, but during the studies I just figured out that that is not what I'm going to do in my life. And I had few opportunities that were connected to arts and especially to photography, and those were the moments when I uh, decided that actually the, f- the career of a photographer and of an artist is going to be my way in the life. What was your process when taking this photo? Um, I think I actually explained it a bit uh, previously. Um, <laughs> I was really mad, I was confused, I was sad. And I just let myself, uh, my thoughts, my creativity to wander. I was like, okay, now I'm going to do whatever that comes to my mind. And I'm going to use those associations, things that are happening now, and to make it more surreal, make it more uh, conceptual. And I'm going to use real objects, I'm going to uh, connect it with with more abstract um, things, Said, for example, a real toilet paper, I connected with writing words on it, why would you do it, you know, it's, it's absurd. So it was really like a real flow, and I wasn't thinking that much, which is not usual how I do, I usually really like to you know, have everything planned and written in the end. So uh, it was really, really um, somehow a new process for me. And I think that it's, um, that is, that is one of the aspects actually that was connected to the whole um, series and especially this photo, because everything at the moment was a mess. It was a chaos it was uh there were there was no clear thinking so i think even the process was the part of it why was it important for you to tell this story um it was really important for me to tell this story because it as i mentioned earlier earlier it really reflects the situation and the mindsets that people were having at that time. It's so absurd to buy, you know, um, piles and piles of toilet paper. It's absurd. It doesn't help anyone. It doesn't help anything. (laughs) Maybe economics, I'm not even sure about that. The shortage of toilet paper is also so absurd because it's something that we are... uh, You're not expecting that. So... I believe that the whole uh, quarantine COVID period was um, based on a lot of confusion, illusion and delusion because we didn't know what is going on. We didn't get the real information. We got a lot of misinformation. Of course, not even the people who were supposed to have information, for example, the experts, doctors, the government, they also didn't know what to do. So it's not to blame anyone, like, directly. And the people were just acting like like the only way they, they could act, spontaneously, uh, reckless. 
um, absurd, as I said many times before. So it was just uh, documenting the uh, the time and the place and the actions so that is what is the most important thing the most important thing for me uh, when it comes to telling this story as a photographer what do you hope to achieve through your photos um, I usually tend to have a certain message through my when I'm uh, presenting my photos I never make a photo just because of the beauty or just the sake for the sake of the art you know I'm not um, interested in that kind of uh, presenting my art so I always tend to have a deeper message I'm not um, as an artist I'm not uh, suggesting what is the message but through very um specific symbols and uh, using different objects, putting them in a very um, exact, uh, you know, exact uh, relations with each other or the models, whatever, I create that sense of, of a message that I'm trying to uh, send. So that is the most important thing for me when it comes to my photos and to my work to send that bigger bigger higher message which will come to the to my viewers and they will feel something i say again it doesn't have to be the same thing that i that i felt or that i wanted to feel them it's just the thing that they feel and that is actually the the moment when my mission is accomplished. What would you like the world to know about your community identity heritage? Uh, well, my heritage and my identity is very interesting because I was born in Serbia, actually, in Novi Sad, and I lived there half of my life, and then I came to Bosnia, which is one a very, very messy country, uh, full of diversity. And uh, somehow my identity and cultural heritage is very, very mixed up because my roots are somewhere else. And then I came into a totally different country, which actually uh, consists of parts of my roots. So I don't know how are you, uh, did you know anything about Bosnia? But Bosnia is um, somehow divided in, it's actually formally divided into two parts in Republic of Srpska, which is mainly a Serbian part, and the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is mainly Muslim and Croat part. So we, in the, like, in the, in the, um, our core of our country, and yeah, I say my country because I more feel as a, uh, I feel more as a person who live here, and I feel this country more than Serbia, where are my origins. So in the main, like in the core, we already have this dividing moment, we have that problem. And then we have three, um, three nationalities, as I already said, Serbs, Croats and Muslims. And they all have uh, different religious and political views, so it's very messed up. And uh, also, we had that problem during the COVID, because the governments in the country, but between those two entities, weren't uh, collaborating in a way that they were supposed to. Um, people were the ones who were united and that was a, that was the best thing that could happen so the something that I would like to for the people to know about well let's say community and identity of people here is that uh, even though there are governments and um, the people who are on the like powerful positions they are not interesting in collaboration and in unity 
the people really are. So we are the country that is full of diversity, full of very, very interesting people, very different cultures in one country. And uh, I think that is the beauty of of the community of Bosnia and Herzegovina and of its heritage. Well, I am a person that it's mostly oriented to online presence. I uh, respect print media and it is somehow important for me as a photographer because uh, whatever happens with the... Um, you know, with the online world, uh, if it shuts down and whatever it happens, we will still have that uh, printed uh, blueprint of my work somewhere. So that is what it's important for me as a photographer. Um, and I feel very good about it. I like it. And I am very honored to be a part of uh, such a great, great, um, well, historical thing in the end, because uh, whatever has its, like, a real blueprint in the reality, it's a part of a real history of, like, the real life. So I, I can only say that I'm very happy and satisfied with it. All right, I hope you enjoyed that last episode and learned something new. Don't forget to tune in to the next episode to see what other crazy, incredible, creative, and empowering lessons you can learn from the photos in this book. <laughs>